All right, we're going to pick up where we left off, and we left off at drawing a desktop orientation for our wireframe for responsive design. Now, I went ahead and I drew some other uh, layouts as well. So we want to have a desktop layout that gracefully um, degrades down to a tablet layout, which would then gracefully degrade down to a phone layout so that the visibility of the text is really clear and easy to read. We don't have to pinch and zoom. And also so that if a user is doing this where they're closing and opening their uh, browser window, then the website will also gracefully cascade into a different layout based on um, breakpoints in our media queries for viewport sizes. So let's look at these different ones. This is the one that we started with. And uh, I want to make some uh, notations over here. I, I went ahead and I added some, and so I'm going to talk about this really quickly. This is the desktop view, and there's a sort of a disclaimer about the desktop view. This means it's the desktop view when the browser window is open to be at least 961 pixels wide. Anything lower than that, so 960 and lower, is going to cascade down to this next tablet view. Okay, where you see you've got two columns. Here in the desktop view we have three, but that again in the desktop view is going to be this orientation layout only when the viewport is uh, at least 961 pixels wide. All right, because most tablets have a landscape width resolution of more than 960 pixels, this is the view that most tablets will take while it's in landscape orientation or horizontal orientation. So let's see what happens in tablet layout. So this is the portrait, if you look at the title here, this is the portrait of a tablet. So most tablets are going to take this view and portrait view because they're going to be 960 pixels or less. So um, I want to make a couple of notations about this as well. So um, here you'll notice that I have it where it says between 481 and 960 you might be wondering, well, where's 481 coming in? 481 is going to be the breakpoint for my phone view. So what that's going to do is effectively, <clears throat> if I say on my phone view in the media query that anything uh, up to 480 is going to take this view, and in desktop I'm saying anything over 960 is going to take this view, that leaves all of this stuff in the middle. And so that's where the 481 to 960 comes in. And so we would rewrite our media queries so that these articles and <clears throat> would then cascade and take different percentages. Instead of taking a third, they would then take halves. Although, don't be confused, here we still have it where the class is still called thirds, and that's okay. All right, so don't be confused by that. It means that we intentionally set out to make our primary objective for the desktop and in the desktop we wanted them to be thirds when the browser's width is open larger. Okay and the other thing I want you to notice is that a lot of um, phones, newer phones nowadays, when they're in landscape view they are greater than 480 uh, uh, pixels and so this might be what you see in landscape view on a newer phone that's kind of large. Okay so Anyway, let's look at the phone layout. As I said, this is going to kick in whenever the width of the orientation is 480 or less. And so you are uh, going to typically see this, especially on any older phones, like even including the iPhone 4S. Um, you're going to see this orientation both for landscape and for portrait. But, um, you know, as I said, on some of the newer ones, you might see this for landscape view. All right, but this is a single column, so everything reverts into a single column so that there's a maximum readability factor and that all the content is easy to access. Okay, so let's move into how we're going to take our desktop layout. That's that's where we're going to start. How to take this layout and transform that into an HTML document. So I have Komodo open, a uh, Komodo edit open here, and what I want to do is I'm going to scale this a little bit so that I can still see my layout, but I'm going to have it side by side 
uh, with my information here and actually let's scale it so that it's a little bit bigger and I can see it better and I'll just put the comments off the edge of the browser or off the edge of the screen. So what I've already done is I created a document, an HTML document, and I went ahead and I also created a, a style sheet that goes with it. All right, and I made the link to it and everything. So you can go ahead and do this. And what I did was I put it inside of a folder here uh, called responsive design. So that's my root level directory for this um, test or this demonstration. All right. Now, what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and start building the architecture from this diagram and placing it into the body of my document over here. So I'm going to first look at this and the first thing I see is that I have a header. So I'm going to create a header tag like this. And even though I don't have the element over here on the right where I would have maybe an H1, I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll put a placeholder here that has H1. And then inside of it, I'll put um, header, heading, or I'll put H1 like that. Okay. And so that's what's going to show up there in the header. And then the next section <clears throat> is going to be this one here called section. And it's going to have a class assigned to it of whole. So let's go on down here and we'll type section and class equals whole, like this. And right now I'm going to go ahead and type in my article because I see that on the right side of the screen I have an article in there and right now there's no text or anything. So then the next thing I see is another section called thirds. So let's come on down here and we'll say class equals thirds. Okay, and I'm going to come back to this in a second to put my articles in there, but for right now, let's just jump down here and we'll also go ahead and create the footer. And we're going to create a section also in that, and we're going to say the class equals thirds transparent. Okay, so let's make section class equals thirds and then I'm going to put a space and I'm going to type the word transparent because you can assign more than one class to a specific tag so we're basically piggybacking this tag or this class on with this class for the section tag alright so now what I want to do is I have no articles here and I have no articles here but what I want to look at before I move into that area where I start putting articles in the class equals thirds section. So I want to go up here to where I have my other article and let's figure out what we want to be sort of as our standard stuff that shows up on the screen in each article. First I think I'm going to have an H2 since I already have an H1 in the header. So I'll have H2 and I'll say article H2. Okay. And then next I'll have some paragraph text. And because this is a uh, because this one is the whole, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to paste some text in here so you don't have to watch me type it. But uh, basically what it's saying is um, this will fill the block at 95% until the breakpoint and then 92% to match other single columns. Okay, so we'll stick with that. And if you want so that this will wrap on your screen, you can go up to uh, the edit preferences and you can modify um, where the page wrap is in here. I'm not going to mess with that on mine because um, I don't want to take up all the extra room on my screen because I want you to be able to see in a linear way what's going on very easily. So anyway, these are essentially the two things that I would want to show up inside of the article, even down here, although I'm going to change the text of what's in this paragraph. So I'm going to copy this article and I'm going to paste it down here where it says section class equals thirds. And it still is just an article H2. That's still uh, the same. But for this paragraph, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the whole line and I'll delete it. 
and I'll just recreate that paragraph text again and I'm going to paste something different in here. So let's go ahead and paste. And I've got something that explains that this is the thirds section. All right. And now what I can do, since if you look on the right side, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I can go ahead and take this entire article and I can copy it. And I can go ahead and paste it another five times. And I think that that's five, one, two, three, four, five, and then we need another one that's a sixth one. And uh, now what you can do if you want is we can scroll up to the very top where we've got our first article inside of the thirds section, and we could say thirds one, and then, you know, like thirds two, and so forth here. I'm going to just copy this so it'll be faster, and then thirds three, thirds four, thirds five, and third six. And the reason I'm doing this is just so you can see on screen what is being displayed where, and that might help you understand what's going on just a little bit. Now what we don't have, we're still missing, uh, is the article section uh, down here in the footer. Well, actually, we have the section, we just have the articles. So I'm going to actually create those uh, by hand, because I'm going to create them sort of like cookie cutters again. <clears throat> and if you want, you can also have an H2 again. And the reason I'm not doing like an H3 is because then it would think that the H3 was nested under this last H2, and it's not. Um, so we would say H2, and then we can say um, article H2, and then we'll know that it's in the footer, so I'm not going to put anything else. And then the other thing that you would most likely have, I mean, you can have anything in here, but most likely you would have maybe a list, a set of lists or something. So we're going to just make a, a dummy set of lists, and we'll make them unordered, and <clears throat> we'll make an li with a dummy uh, href, so I'll actually put like a pound symbol in there. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so href, and then uh, we'll go ahead here and put uh, footer link, or some footer link here. Okay. All right, and then <clears throat> I'm going to open up that for just a minute. I'm going to copy this list item. I'll copy that and I'll paste maybe a couple of more of them. And so now I've got a full article section that I might want to reproduce three times. And you can, like I said before, you can change the content that goes in here. So, so now I've got three articles inside of my footer section. Okay. And this is, I think, going to sort of represent the basic setup for our page. I'm going to go ahead and save this and then we can test it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new page here and I'm going to just grab it from my my explorer window and drag my index there. And then this is what we've got so far, which is not beautiful, hard to read, but this is a good starting place. And the thing that's really important for you to look at and understand before we continue on to the next demo is that Ultimately, somebody who is blind or has, you know, a screen reader that they're using, they're going to be able to read this in this linear fashion. And you need to realize that this is the linear fashion that ultimately it's going to show up um, on in a phone. And we're going to style it so it looks prettier. But what's really important is that the content is in a linear progression and it goes in the order that we want it to go in. And just visually, it's going to cascade differently on the page with the floats and stuff like that. So in the next demo, we're going to talk about how to transform this with CSS into something that looks more like these designs.